Scaling up energy efficiency is critical to achieving our climate change uh, mitigation goals here in the Northeast. It's the least cost power supply that we have. The, the megawatt that we don't use is way cheaper than the megawatt that we do. Uh, and there are all these wonderful ancillary benefits. We, do, we create jobs in our region, we lower the cost of health care, we make a big difference on climate. So there are all these reasons why we need to be scaling up efficiency as, as the, the first order of business around providing energy. Connecticut Children's Medical Center participated in our retrofit program. They looked at a wide variety of measures. By going deeper into their operations, they qualified for our comprehensive program. This generated a, a bonus for the work that they did, making the project both economically and energy efficient. We started off, I guess, a few years back with uh, a, a free cooling system where we use the outside cold air in the wintertime to chill the chilled water we need to cool the building, cool the MRI. And, and then from there, we, we looked at sensors to turn off uh, lights when they weren't in use, and we did some lighting upgrades, and we've added a new chiller that was energy efficient. We added VAVs variable air volume boxes so that we could reduce the airflow in some of the areas that do close on weekends and at night. And then we did some stuff with insulation of pipes. We tried to make the building envelope more uh, sealed up and we continue to look for more things every day. The support from Energized Connecticut funds makes these controls projects more uh, financially viable. That way the facilities managers can cut operating costs and get to the core business of taking care of children. It allows us to take this building which has grown. For example, we've added probably twice as many refrigerators as we used to have. Everything has gotten more intense and more heavily utilized, but our utility bills have managed to stay flat. Energy is a big spend for us, and the less we spend on energy, the more care we provide to children. It's as simple as that. The facilities manager has not only led a great team effort within the organization itself, but has been a good external spokesman, really very supportive of, uh, very much an advocate for energy efficiency policies in Connecticut. The changes in how we use energy aren't just made in a day. They're made incrementally every day, every month, every year. So we need to take a concerted long-term approach, like our business leaders. Our business leaders are making investments in their facilities to reduce energy use, make them more efficient, but they have a program. They'll do a certain set of things in one year, another set of things in another year. So we need to take a long-term approach to scaling up efficiency. Durkin and Crow Lumber Company is a manufacturer of eastern white pine in New Hampshire. We're 85 employees. We produce about 30 million board feet of pine a year. So we buy logs. We saw those logs into one inch thick uh, lumber. Uh, that lumber gets dried in uh, one of our dry kilns, after which it goes into the planer mill, is milled to order. We don't waste anything. We, uh, we buy the logs, we debark them, we grind the bark, we sell our sawdust to farmers. A lot of our sawdust we burn for heat in the wintertime. We sell our chips to the paper company. Any way that we can save energy uh, means we're saving money. They hired an outside uh, consulting company to come in and do an audit of the energy usage in the facility and determine where there might be opportunities to, to make improvements. The biggest savings have been the, the air compressors and the lighting uh, projects. We've upgraded close to 500 uh, light fixtures uh, throughout the facility. We learned that uh, the demand in the mill was actually higher than, than what the old compressor was able to put out. So we actually got a, a machine that was properly sized for the demand, and at the same time, it's using less electricity than the old uh, compressor. Adding all the projects together, we figured the savings would be on the order of $100,000 a year, and that's about 850,000 kilowatt hours, I think, per year. The total payback was about two and a half years. With Durgan and Crow, when we started the process of one project and they saw the benefits and the results, it became very easy over time. There was kind of a trust. They've been very helpful in getting the right people here to evaluate the projects and find out the best direction to go to, to improve the efficiency and to create a real great return on our dollar. Durgan and Kroll is a good example of a business that's somewhat unique to a state like New Hampshire that you may not see in many other jurisdictions in our region, but they also prove that it's a great opportunity for any kind of business to really engage in energy efficiency improvements and upgrades. There's a number of things we love about energy efficiency programs is they lower Durgan and Kroll's costs. They're much more successful in our area, and it also lowers the use of energy that we see on our system. It's certainly fitting 
that a business that is reliant upon natural resources to succeed is being a great steward of natural resources by being energy efficient as possible, and they really are a good example of that. But having business case studies like this one really do go to show that this is not just good business, it's good investment, it's good policy, it's good all around, it's a win-win-win for the state of New Hampshire. What we're very excited about here in the Northeast and with all of our partners um, is the ability to scale it up and bring new technologies, new programs, and just new ways of thinking about energy to our customers. I pledge that we're going to get to carbon neutrality, and we were a charter signatory in committing ourselves to that. The original campus ethos was to look down the Mohawk Valley to the American West and imagine how you educated people to prepare for the challenges of the world. So still today, that ethos is part of Union College, and our focus is on, of course, the new frontiers, which are global in nature. Union College's goal of being carbon neutral really is driving them to make uh, impressive investments in energy efficiency. We've engaged with National Grid on several projects and invested a large sum of money to ensure that we are attaining some of our strategic goals. We had an energy audit put together and, and there were a number of projects that we were uh, identified. We've been able to incent for different gas measures as well as electric incentive measures. The total incentives are just under uh, $400,000 for all the projects they've done so far. On campus, we've done several energy projects. We've engaged in controls projects, implementation of energy con conservation measures, dealing with chillers, air handling units, drives, all of those sorts of things. By saving on a, over a million kilowatts of energy consumption, we have also saved over $175,000 a year in operating budget costs. And what we've found is that most of the investments that we've made in energy savings have actually done just that. Uh, we're now looking at cogeneration as an alternative way of supplying not just our heating and power uh, and cooling needs, but also the growing need to provide humidification to our science labs. All these things have been reducing significant dollars to the bottom line. It's about being a sustainable institution. If you really want to extend the life of your university or college into the next century, these are simply steps that have to be taken. These are cost-effective technologies that are returning on the investment, ultimately reducing the operating cost of the institution, which translates into reducing tuition increases to families who desperately are looking for that relief. The District of Columbia um, is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States and therefore it is important to uh, manage our energy consumption. Therefore, you know, we are required to work with the largest energy users to make sure that in the upcoming years there is enough load to be distributed and avoid any blackouts for the future. Marriott International is a leading hospitality organization with 4,000 hotels across 79 countries. JW Marriott is the flagship hotel. The hotel uh, sits on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is a very prestigious address. The long-term objectives of the Marriott International is to reduce the energy consumption by 20% by year 2020. We implemented energy efficiency projects uh, based on return on investment. Most recently, we have implemented LED energy efficiency lighting projects. We have experienced 10% energy savings in our hotel. Overall, it's about $80,000 savings for the hotel annual savings, about 628,000 kilowatt hours savings, and additionally over a million carbon emission saved. From lighting, it's moved on to ventilation systems, it's moved on to controls, and really looking at the holistic systems within the hotels. They helped us to identify energy efficiency projects that require energy rebates, and this will make our owners to buy in the projects that we needed. Their guests are their most important customers. And while energy efficiency is important to our programs, we want to make sure that these businesses thrive in what they're trying to do. Our customers appreciate the efforts we've made in this hotel. We are actually able to gain business over our competitors in being socially responsible and having a very, very effective energy conservation in place. We are the first hotel in the U.S. to be certified as a highest for 50,001 certified hotel. And what it made difference here at the hotel is uh, the people who change their behavior towards energy efficiency into the day-to-day -day operation that helps to meet the ISO 50001 guidelines as well as to meet Marriott commitment to conserve energy. 
Marriott has been a leader of sustainability for a long time. This is just one of the many ways that Marriott is realizing its intent and its desire to be one of the environmental leaders throughout the world. The role of policy is to establish our long-term goals, like the carbon reduction goal of reducing uh, carbon emissions by 80% by 2050 so that we can achieve climate stabilization. So policy needs to set those goals and then translate that into actionable uh, programs and uh, that can be taken, undertaken. And we've benefited from that in several states uh, in the Northeast. University of Massachusetts Amherst is a flagship uh, university of a five campus system within Massachusetts. We are a public research institution. There's 28,000 students, approximately 1,000 faculty and about 5,000 staff. So in essence, we're a little city within the western part of Massachusetts. We have a utilities budget of $30 million a year. So if we can reduce that budget, we reduce our cost of business significantly. UMass is huge. It's 360 odd buildings of every variety, type, size, age, uh, complexity. There are all kinds of systems here in all stages of repair and disrepair and a lot of sophisticated energy efficiency systems as well. We're working with partners like uh, Northeast Utilities to make sure that we're a leader in every facet of sustainability, including, most importantly to us, energy efficiency. We've been working with UMass on energy conservation measures uh, to decrease their energy costs over a long-term plan. We both look at both retrofits as well as new construction and identify measures that will save uh, the institution money. It's really important for us to educate our future generations to make sure that they don't overlook energy conservation because it's really the, the first fuel and the most important thing when it comes to energy. In order to make sure that our students focus on energy efficiency, we've implemented a number of programs on campus, most notably our LED program and then also our energy dashboard program. The work that's happening at UMass right now um, is quite impressive, really from a top-down, bottom-up approach, starting with Executive Order 44 that was established by Governor Patrick's administration, working in a comprehensive fashion through interagency to come together to look at how can we do greater energy efficiency reductions uh, in the state buildings across the Commonwealth. The energy we use is fundamental to the communities we live in and to how we interact and live our lives. But the beauty of ener energy, and specifically clean energy and energy efficiency, is all the wonderful benefits that the jobs stay in our local community, the economic activity does. It really is about the fabric of society and building it together uh, through this fabric, and it's available to all citizens, not just some. So here at Karis Wheels, we're a supplier of specialty packaging for the wiring cable, rope, cord, and any other products or items that are flexible and need to be wound on a, a linear spool. We're located in six different states. We have about 450 employees uh, across these various plants. Our Rutland group is made up of about 130 people. We manufacture spools here in uh, the Rutland facility, plastic, plywood reels, uh, tin. We've been in Rutland since the, uh, for about 63 years. So the energy efficiency projects that we've undertaken um, have been uh, principally around uh, lighting, as well as compressed air. With the compressed air project, we had two compressors that were here in the, in the Rutland Mill. One that was a 75 horsepower and the other one was a, a 50 horsepower. And we were able to take those and actually downsize them considerably to, uh, to a 60 and a 40, essentially reducing the amount of uh, power by about 33% that's used to operate this mill. When you stop and think about it, bigger is not always better anymore. And we've, and it, the audit really spelled that out, and Efficiency Vermont really helped us prove that. The result was saving them some 400,000 kilowatt hours of energy, which, and I'm sure this is happy for their finance team, about $50,000 a year in savings. The net effect of all of this over time, our work with Keras Reels goes back some 12 years, back to 2000, we've been able to save over a million kilowatt hours, reducing their electric consumption by 20%. One of the unique aspects of Keras Reels is that they are 100% employee owned. Those employees who help to create the energy efficiency policy and who really have 
created tremendous buy-in and input into the policy and its success have carried it forward to not just within the company, but also at home. The wonderful thing about efficiency is that it's very cost effective for both society and for individual customers. If you factor in greenhouse gas emissions and all of the other benefits that go along with efficiency, it's just a no-brainer that efficiency is just going to increase over the next few years. Technologies are changing. When we look at some of our customers within the state, the vital products that they're, they're producing, be it in the medical industry, uh, the financial industry, those particular areas, they have very sensitive equipment out there. Many people are relying on them. We need to have that modern system, that reliable system out there within them, serving them to meet their needs going forward. Citizens Bank is a regional bank that operates from Ohio and Michigan all the way through New England and down to Delaware. Citizens Bank, a uh, very key customer uh, of ours in Rhode Island with their energy services uh, leader and, and our folks, they really work together to, to look at a comprehensive approach for all their data centers and their facilities of, of lighting, HVAC measures, EMS measures, to see how much they could save on their energy. We've uh, been working to improve the energy usage that Citizens Bank, and we've done lighting projects, we've done energy efficiency in heating and air conditioning projects, and we also have underway a a BMS, which is Building Management System Project, where we can remotely control all of the uh, heating and air conditioning systems in our branches and back office locations. By installing the, the EMS systems, it allows Citizens Bank and their energy manager to be able to streamline operations to provide greater occupant comfort um, within those buildings, but also to make sure that they can um, look at the various set points to make sure that they're operating at their peak efficiency. In our Cranston Operations Facility, we've relamped over 4,600 fixtures, and as a result, we hope to save more than a million kilowatt hours of energy in the next year. In addition to doing an extensive amount of work in our back offices, we've also done a lot of work in our branches as well. So when you have more than 1,200 branches, it makes a big difference when you can install energy efficient fixtures. So across the state of Rhode Island, we've done more than 70 branches, and each branch varies in profitability or return on equity, but somewhere in the neighborhood of $5,000 a branch. So you can imagine over time that's a significant energy savings and a significant dollar savings for the bank. Citizens Bank has taken it to the next level by hiring a full-time energy manager who's responsible not only for the branches in Rhode Island but throughout New England. This important step ensures that the lessons learned in Rhode Island can be shared across their portfolio in all of New England. Citizens Bank is looking at their business operations from a very deep and comprehensive way and looking at energy as one of the areas that could be much more strategically addressed. So going forward, we'll continue that very strong relationship to build comprehensiveness and look at the full universe of opportunity across how they use energy in all of its different forms. There's a focus and a concentration on sustainability with this organization. It starts at the ground level. It starts with the kind of lighting upgrades and building management upgrades that we're talking about. And it's a citizen's commitment. And it's something that we're not afraid to talk about in the global marketplace. We're proud of what we've done. And we've got a good story to tell.